Yeah, I think, um, well, the first question was, it was through a mutual friend, um, Deb Shriver, who introduced T and I together. I had done a film about Hearst, the Hearst Media Company, and Deb was the producer of that. She works at Hearst, CCO. So she was friends with the friend and family and said, why don't you do a film about Ella? And then T was already writing a book with her mom about Ella. So it was kind of this mutual uh, meeting. And so I said, sure, I'd be interested. And so I flew out and met with Ella and we had a great dinner and really seemed to hit it off. And then met T, obviously, and we hit it off and the family. So to me, it was like, okay, this is great. Now, how do we make this film? So um, it was about just figuring out what the story was going to be and what the scope of it was going to be and what the ups and downs and the arc of the story was going to be, et cetera. So that was sort of that journey. Even technically, how did you integrate yourself into that kitchen? There were a couple of shots there. I thought, boy, she's in the way. <laughs> I definitely, that, that, she yeah. was in the way. She was definitely in the way. <laughs> T and I can get in the way. <laughs> but, yeah. I mean, that's clockwork. That, like, I mean, that's obviously one of your, your attributes as a, as a business is that yeah. you can run that large an operation without you know, knocking into each other yeah. and keeping the food hot. Everybody kind of knows where everybody's going. And when you see the camera, they kind of know where they're headed. You know, <laughs> we actually had a television show on a network called Off the Men. Well, in Turner South, it was called Off the Men before Katrina. So they've gotten kind of used to having cameras around a little bit. But this one's very intrusive. So, yeah. 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 <laughs> but you also seem very comfortable in front of the camera. Ella is a natural, obviously. She just... She just shines, you know, yeah. um, but she's also got a strong personality. You mm -hmm. caught that. Uh, was she always fun to, <laughs> to film and deal with and open? Did you draw her out? Um, I mean, I felt we had a really great open communication. I mean, T knows your mom, your, you know, your mom better than anybody and how, she, how you felt she was. But I, I felt like it was just a real friendly conversation. And um, I think as she had to trust chefs, um, from an early age, I, she and I had to build sort of a trust, you know, as I yeah. do with anybody I interview, it's just that comfort level, right? Uh -huh. Be able to bring out what you need and know that I'm going to treat it with respect and, right. you know, right. so that was that trust that hopefully she felt with me at the beginning. And, that... and has, has Alice seen the film? Yes, and thank God she likes it. So anyway, <laughs> so she wanted nothing to do with the book or the film, and now she loves them both. Thanks to this one and everybody. So um, truly, it was. She's thrilled, and she sends her love to everybody. And if she wasn't ninety-one and a half, and a, not, you know, she would love to be here. So sorry that she's not. So anyway, we'll send her love back. We'll do it. We'll do it. We'll do it. Uh, questions from the audience, Miss Ma'am, right here. Okay, my youngest daughter's a budding chef in England right now. She's just south of London, and she's been going through some of the. Some nightmares with the the restaurant owners of the restaurant that she's just been brought up in as a chef. She's only being the lead chef, and she's 22, right, and stuff. And I would love, yeah, it's absolutely not, adore, not. for her to see this movie as an idea of of the leadership role as a chef that she's growing into. Where would she be able to see this movie? Oh, thank God, we can finally answer this question. Um, <laughs> you can see this movie on Netflix in May. Yeah. <laughs> Explain that. Yeah. May 1st, probably. Yeah. yeah. But if she ever comes to New Orleans or Baton Rouge, tell her to come on down and see us, and we'd love to sit and visit and talk to her a little bit if she would be interested. All right. <laughs> come on down. Come on down. <laughs> no, indeed. No. Do you ever, what do you close? When do you close? We close two days a year. Guess which one? Christmas. Christmas. Come on. Thank you. Christmas and Mardi Gras. That's it. On Mardi Gras Day, we can't get sober customers, employees, or us. So, anyway. <laughs> if, if, Other questions? Could I ask Other questions? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Please. Yeah. Yes, miss. Hi. Hi, darling. <laughs> so, what's the new generation, generation after you guys? Well, it wasn't on the agenda, and T and I forgot to have babies. So... <laughs> You just sound like my brother asking yeah. the same question. We're going to think about that next week. <laughs> <laughs> There's lots of younger generate. Yeah, they're amazing. Like all going to culinary school. So there's there's plenty of them. Thank God. But we wish they'd grow up quicker. We're ready for a little help. Anyway. Man with the blonde hair there. Yeah. Just call her up. I'd like to know. Uh, I have a question and a comment. 
how long it took you to make the movie because it had some really great footage with all kind of great people. And before you answer, I'd like to say that my cousin lived catty corner to the restaurant and he would bring turtle soup to family reunions. And it was always a hit. <laughs> We're always bribing the people who live near us, so <laughs> good. Uh, the film took, I think, on and off over two years. It's late 2015, was it? I, I swear I lose track of time because yeah. it's always like up, you know, like 2014? I think so. Late, yeah, anyway, it, it was over. <laughs> <laughs> You're very busy. Juggling different the, films. The gentleman the in the back row. On what day may we all come in for brunch together? <laughs> wait, wait. Any Saturday during hurricane season. <laughs> yes. Speaking of hurricane season, Lolly, I think it was you who, who mentioned um, you came back after 13 months, but it was you didn't know how hard it would be to come back. So after you opened after Katrina, how long did it take for you to meet payroll, <laughs> pay for food? Yeah. I mean, when did it start returning a profit? Oh gosh, five years, six years. Yeah, it was a long time. Our main goal, and you saw Ella say it, was that we have all these fabulous employees. And our goal was, what can we do? We've got to take care of them hopefully get everything going. And if we can break even, then we're being successful. And so that was our goal. And so we were able to take, keep our um, management team on salary for what, three months, yeah. six months, maybe longer. The whole, and the whole, oh, the whole the time, the, the management team, the hourly employees we did for three months. And then we said, we please go find another job, but you will always have a position with us, you know, if you choose to come back. So it, it was, it, it took a while. It took a while. Uh, yes, here, young lady. Uh -huh. um, I'm just wondering how many cooks do you have on at any given day, and how many servers do you have on any given day? It's a small neighborhood restaurant. We don't talk about that. <laughs> <laughs> we do. We have 50 plus cooks, and you know, um, honestly, we have pushing 200 employees um, oh. all in. So, um, but you know, each. There's like four areas in the restaurant. They all have their own manager, and each area is, you know, like its own little restaurant. And um, we've been open since 1893, so we're starting to get the hang of it. So, you know. Yeah. <laughs> Miss? With such uh, amazing female leadership, do you see the day of having a female head chef? So at Cafe Adelaide, a restaurant that we have in New Orleans, Cafe Adelaide in the Swizzle Stick, uh, bar we have a fabulous in fact the, the person who opened the film meg yeah. young chef that was speaking she's our chef at cafe adelaide now and so we're thrilled to have a lady chef now this is a new one on us our chef is pregnant so that's new for us we've not had a pregnant <laughs> chef before anyway so we're working on how to deal with that no it'll be fine and we're excited about thrilled about it it did take a while for more and more women to come into the kitchen but we've got tons of them now it's awesome is, is there a point at which it kind of runs itself? You've established such a tradition yeah. and no. you're such a system. No. 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 Okay, so it's always no. No. about you guys being there, keeping it's the not goodwill going. It's not and, just us, yeah. but I mean, but no. it takes a lot. Yeah. We have an amazing team that's mm -hmm. been with us. A lot of them you saw in the film. I mean, Tori's 20 years, Steve's 25 or 30. I mean, you know, whatever. But it, it's constant. Mm. What, what makes a great chef? I mean, is there a single key to that is it a kind of genius is it an attention to detail imagination well i'll just say something that we just would always say to describe our beloved jamie which is uh -huh. that he had magic in his hands and um fire in his belly and a sparkle in his eye anyway um so it, it you need the whole thing it, it, it really doesn't uh -huh. cut it just if you're a really good cook you need to be a really good cook and have that magic in your right. hands but you need a lot of other abilities as well it's like a pianist Somebody who's, they can be technically great, but they have to have that. That's ex, true. Extra. If they don't have that yeah. soul and yeah, all yeah, the rest yeah, of it. Yeah. Uh, yes, sir. First of all, thank you for Bananas Foster. Oh, thank mom. I mean, anyway. But, you know, do, all, do all the restaurants still have a Brennan on duty? Too many restaurants and not enough Brennans. But, <laughs> but, it, but, yeah, but we, at Commanders, basically we do. Our cousin Brad helps us, and T and myself. And um, 
what is it, Sunday night, Steve Woodruff, our operations manager, usually covers Sunday nights for us. Aunt Dottie, wonderful Aunt Dottie, will give us a night on the weekend off, you know. <laughs> and, uh, and we try to be there. We're there most of the time, yeah. one of us. Yes, miss? Uh, how long does it take for someone to be trained to work there, like, say, a server or you know, a waiter? It depends on the position. But it's amazing how quickly you can go through the system if you're applying yourself. I mean, you, you, can, you could come to work at Commanders and be there nine months and then be standing on the floor of the main dining room making $70,000 a year before you know it. Mm. Just saying. Yeah. <laughs> Any applicants out there? Uh, yeah. Sir, again, the back. The fellas are uh, old fashioned. Rye or bourbon and what label? <laughs> well, um, these days, Maker's Mark, thank you very much. But um, she also likes a scotch old fashioned. Yeah. <laughs> Lally and I wrote a book on cocktails, and all that is in there. <laughs> oh, wow. What do you think of this whole new? food culture, you know, the Anthony Bourdain and the proliferation. I think it's good for everybody, right? Nobody's recording this, right? Okay, they are, so never mind. I'm not going to give you my real answer to that. Let's just say anybody who spits in a pot is not somebody that I respect. Oh, Lord. But Julia Child never did that. Julia right? Child never did that. So you think she got her mother's genes? <laughs> I love the whole new food thing, but I mean, um, yeah. I'll just shut up. <laughs> Look, there's a nice lady up there that wants to ask you yeah. something. Let's Go change ahead, Matt. the in subject. The, in yeah. the paint. <laughs> Every thought of rotating back, you look through this whole history and the different recipes that were used and, and the phases that you'll go through. You ever go back retro and bring something back you wow. did? I'll just repeat, do you ever go back and bring back a yeah. recipe from yeah. the 40s yeah. and 50s? Yeah, we, we absolutely do. But um, sometimes we don't eat those things anymore for a reason. <laughs> you know what I mean? Things are, they are better now. But there are some great old recipes that we do bring back. Like we do Chopsteak Stanley that you saw. My family loves that dish. That was in the film. And Leslie found that footage. I got to tell you, the footage of the gentleman eating the breakfast. What's that great actor's name? Who was that? Robert Preston, how amazing was that? Okay, so that was my Uncle Owen, my Aunt Dottie's brother Owen, you know, our uncle. I had never met him. He died before I was born. I had never seen him alive, and this one found that footage. And so, you know, I got to show Mom and Dottie that. And while we're on that, not that it's answering your question, but there's over 400 things in this film, you know, film and photographs and music that we had to get approval for to use. So this is not an easy undertaking. But <laughs> that was a good breakfast, wasn't it? Yeah. Did, do you, you have your own archive? Obviously, you've kept a lot of photographs. No, we're oh, horrible really? about that. Really? There was a fire. There was a fire. There was uh, a fire. fire. No, go ahead. And we keep it all in poor Lally's office. We're terrible. We don't have what you would want right. us to have. And Leslie went right. and found. Yeah. Well, they had quite a bit. She's, you know, underplaying. They do have a lot of family footage that you saw in there. Uh -huh. um, you know, the home movies and the old photographs, which is fantastic. But I think there was a lot of stock footage that we had to go find. And then some of the great archival, like with Owen Brennan, you know, seeing him was something that was new even to Ella. So, mm -hmm. um, but I have a really great team of people at my office that can go and find this great stuff and, yeah. you know, dig it out and find these little nooks and Was there crannies. anything you couldn't find that you kind of were dying to get into the film or in areas of the film, or you pretty much got it covered? Um, I'm trying to think. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I'm just doing my job. It's just aggravated. But anyway, no. But, um, but yeah, no, I don't think so. I mean, you yeah. know, it was just what we could find we may do yeah. with. You know what I mean? I mean, you got a hell of a lot of information into 90 minutes. I have to say, yeah. it's one of the most efficient Hurricane Katrina pieces of film I've seen, too. I mean, that's only about... Two, two or three minutes, but yeah. it really delivers the message of how powerful that storm was and what it did. Yeah, we you don't know? want to belabor that. Yeah. No, no, I think it's in the right proportion. It has yeah. to be there. Mm -hmm. yeah. And that, was, that footage was shot by another TV show that was following, following you guys around during that time. And that uh -huh. show never got made, but fortunately that footage existed that I could actually use. So. It was amazing to be able to have that footage. There's a lady on the far side there. Real quick, following up with that, I saw a picture of my cousin Armand Dante that worked with you guys for a while. He passed this year, and it was really precious to me to see a picture of him. So your archives were 
worked, and it was worth it to me to see a picture of him. So thank you very much for it. Was that in the old photographs of like the cuisine yeah. symposium? Uh -huh. it, it was. It was a while back. He worked for Commander's Palace, and he eventually opened his own restaurant in. Yeah. On the North Shore. No, in Waveland. In Waveland. In Waveland, of course. We loved him. Aunt Dottie, you remember him? Yes. Remember Armand? There's yes. Aunt Dottie. Yeah. Yeah. Aw. Wow. wow. I was real interested to see this because he used to talk about his time at Commander's Palace all the time. Wow. Like when we went to the beach house, that's all we heard about oh. him. <laughs> so you're sick of it. Why are you here tonight? I mean, I don't know. <laughs> and we no. have maybe one last question. There's yeah. a lady in blue. He was special. Thank you. Very. Lady in blue. Yes, you. Mm -hmm. um, I actually have two questions. One, do you have plans to open a restaurant in Baton Rouge? And two, I'm from New Orleans, so I understand the recovery struggle. Do you have advice for businesses or homeowners in Baton Rouge recovering from the August war? Oh, good God. You know, we're so sorry. You know, it's unbelievable what you all have been through. And if there's somebody that y'all think we could help in some way, we've always wanted to adopt a restaurant around here that was going through that. Um, but it was just one foot in front of the other. You know what I mean? Um, I don't know that we'll do a restaurant, another restaurant. In Baton I actually own a restaurant in Baton Rouge. Mm -hmm. Reginelli's. <laughs> I'm a partner in Reginelli's. I'm not an operating partner, but Daryl Reginelli's a dear friend. And so um, if you've ever had gumbo pizza at Reginelli's, it was invented by Tori McPhail of Commander's Palace. Anyway, and if you have a really good glass of wine there, you can thank me for that because I really improved the wine there. Anyway. <laughs> Yeah, that's, yeah, that's not right okay. Here. Never yeah. mind. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's only in the What's your favorite comfort food from Commander's Palace when you just like want to kick back? What do you order? Well, we all love the Commander's salad, but there's an old dish. Talking about old dishes we used to do. Um, in my old family, I think we most of us would say veal fett. It was yeah. veal and fettuccine a million years ago. It was just a, that's like what we go over there and say, please make us a veal fett. Anyway. <laughs> yeah. Well, you've got a great business, and well, you've got a wonderful film. What a nice tribute. Lovely. Uh, Thanks, everybody. Thank you for having us. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you.